Happy 50th anniversary to the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act. I'm Darren Paul Hemis, and I've had the pleasure of being Deputy Director for the Division of Drinking Water for the past eight years. In fact, coincidentally, I started in this job on December 16, 2016, or the 42nd anniversary date. First and foremost, I want to thank all our drinking water system partners. They do the hard work of delivering pure and wholesome drinking water every day. This makes modern society possible and has allowed most people to take their drinking water for granted. Only a little more than 100 years ago, drinking water systems were still sources of typhoid fever and other waterborne diseases that took the lives of many citizens. Many states and drinking water systems worked to advance drinking water treatment to improve public health. However, this did not mean you could go anywhere in the U.S. and trust that the water was treated adequately. In 1974, Congress found this unacceptable, and so was born the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act. California, shortly after this, followed with the State Safe Drinking Water Act. Now, while it's always important to recognize where we have come from and all the advances we have made, my job has always been to see where we need to go in the future. To me, the past 50 years, with all its many accomplishments, proves what we're capable of. This makes me confident we'll be able to take on future challenges. To this end, the Safe Drinking Water Act is structured as a continuous improvement approach, anticipating that we will continue to learn more about water quality, face new challenges, and thus need to take actions to further protect public health. As we recognize this 50th anniversary, we are contemplating impacts from perm polyfluor polyfluorinated compounds, also known as PFAS compounds, microplastics, and climate change impacts like harmful algal blooms and extended droughts. California will continue to be a leader in water quality and water supply. This is demonstrated by our work in microplastics monitoring methods and our adoption of regulations for how to accomplish direct potable reuse of wastewater. However, as we do this, we need to recognize that we cannot leave any community behind. It will be costly to address our water needs for treatment and to secure a climate change resistant portfolio of water sources. However, protection of human health is paramount. So we will need to find new ways to organize water supply systems for our communities that seek efficiency and better distribution of costs. California already has led the way by encouraging partnerships between water systems, seeking voluntary and mandatory consolidations where appropriate. And we will need more creativity in the future as well, with concepts like regionalization of areas having small systems into one legal and fiscal entity so they can be better prepared to take on the future. This has already happened in other utilities, but is only beginning in water. People who work in drinking water utilities sector like to point out that it's the only utility we consume and put in our bodies. Definitely don't try that with electricity. But seriously, we consider this every day, and it guides us in our jobs. I won't be here to see the 100th anniversary, but I'm confident we're working to make sure those that do are just as proud as we are now. Happy anniversary, Safe Drinking Water Act. Thanks for what you've given us and where you will lead us in the future.